We're gonna have to put her on the scale. Bite. You, you got it? He's got it. <laughs> Might be the biggest fish I've caught in a while. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh we were just scared after losing that last one. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the vlog. We're starting things off with a fish today. Would you know? We got it on the Texas rigged crack and crawl and I'm thinking I'm gonna let him go. I'm thinking we might throw some big baits today. I didn't have too much organized for this video ahead of time like you know maybe you have an idea of what you want to throw that day etc but I did not so this video was kind of spur of the moment. It's been pouring all day long and the rain just let up and it looks like it's just going to be overcast for the remainder of the day so I didn't know if we were going to be able to even catch some fish today. A lot of times in our area right after heavy rain the fishing gets thrown off but we we're able to secure uh, we've had two bites now that was the first fish landed and I'm thinking what we're going to do is break out some big baits for you guys today. We got the uh, I think this is the 8 inch mag draft. I want to throw that around a little bit for you guys. We'll talk about the rod and reel specs here in a little bit. We've also got a, a Citizen. This is that 6 inch Citizen by Working Class Zero. And then we got that 316. Uh, what is this guy called, babe? Rising Sun. That's right. This is the Rising Sun. It's and I feel like this inch. is a 6 inch, but yeah. yeah, regardless, we'll talk about all the gear we've got because everything's a little bit different. But our favorite swim bait setups when it comes to the rod, reels, handles, and all the grips and all that stuff like that here in just a minute. But let's go ahead and just maybe catch some more fish. We might try and get on some numbers on the Texas rig real quick. Hit some reed lines, hit some trees, hit some rock, and we're going to see what's up with them today. And then we'll go ahead and cast out those big baits here in a little bit. It's tough to say. I don't know if this thing's got as much juice as we need it to have. Uh, it might be good. I don't know. I can't tell. We might just have to paddle back. We can probably paddle in this wind, huh? Got one? Dang. That was fast. Oh, nice. Oh, man. You think that's three pounds? He's looking all right. Oh, he's dogging. Oh, shoot. Yeah, keep him tight. Keep him tight. Oh, my gosh. What just happened? <laughs> Making a quick story post, y'all. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. We just hit 100,000. Thank you guys so much for that. That was on the saucy swimmer. Oh, saucy swimmer. Yeah, yeah. Three pounds, six ounces. Nice. <laughs> Crazy. We were just about to leave too. It got so windy guys in the open water over there. It is like white capping. I mean, it said 15 mile an hour winds, but apparently this storm might have a second wave here in a couple hours. So we're probably gonna stay out for just a little bit. And I bet these fish could go on a pretty intense moving bite. So we're gonna switch it over to moving baits. I'm now throwing for the first time ever the purple colored Citizen. Check that guy out, six inch Citizen. This is an eight aught owner beast hook. And what I've done is I have, uh, I kind of hold on to the weight and I grab pliers and I bend the hook up just a little bit. It kind of sticks up just enough to miss less hook sets. Cause when you first rig these baits up, that hook almost pushes back into the skin like a Texas rig and you'll miss a little bit more bites on it. So anytime you get a, a bite on a bait like this, you really want to capitalize. And so we like to bend those hooks up. It takes some pressure, but uh, it's, it's well worth it. A lot of guys throwing the citizens are doing that same thing. Oh man, I think I had one. No way. Yep, got one, but I don't know if it's big. Good. He's okay. okay. <laughs> nice. There we go, y'all. <laughs> got one on the citizen. There we go. Okay. Ooh. Check him out. We are about to dehook this fish. That bait is just gone. I imagine y'all can barely see that, but it is in there. The tail is folded. The hook right there on the side of the mouth. Good thing we kept it tight because he definitely could have shook that. But there you go, man. Solid two and a quarter to two and three quarter fish right there on the six inch Citizen. Working it nice and slow, a little faster than normal. I will say, normally I'm creeping this thing along the bottom. We're feeling out the grass. I'm gonna get him back in the water real quick, you guys. Nice little release on that citizen fish. Back to the depths, y'all. Yeah, normally we're creeping these nice and slow, and if you swim them pretty quick, you'll notice they might swim a little sideways. These things are really meant to work the bottom. We have found in other friends as well who are using them left and right. Got those bite marks, man, sick. Got a little character now. The purple color. We haven't broken these things out. It was on one of the most recent drops that we purchased from. Uh, we've got a, a large stock of these citizens. They're hard to come by, guys. I'll put the information to these down in the description. But a, a working class zero bait, fully custom, 
if you want to order these it's usually like if you don't refresh the site and get on there as soon as they drop you're gonna no, you're not gonna get any there's a huge following around the working class zero brand of swim baits so needless to say you guys be on the lookout i think they've got some more hard baits dropping soon but hopefully we get some more citizens in the mix y'all let's go ahead and keep on casting the winds are like just teetering it's 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 like we need to get off the water and then a few minutes later it's feeling all right so the thing is this motor we've taken it out twice now without charging it this is the third time and i maybe had it on the charger for like 15 minutes the other day so we're kind of in limbo because out there where it opens up where the ramp is is where it's the most windy so if i feel like this motor's dying on us we do have a paddle but it's going to be real tough getting back to the ramp before a potential thunderstorm so things are looking good right now but look these clouds are flying by so fast Let's try and get some more fish though before we call it you guys. Hopefully we can land a couple more citizen out. Ooh, that was almost a bird's nest. All right, y'all, I know nothing has changed for you guys, but it is the next day for us. We went ahead and left. It got so windy, the motor was barely even chugging. And so, uh, yeah, this is day two throwing the swim baits. Devin's throwing the rising sun right now. I am back on the citizen, and the water is much more stained today. I mean, it's looking pretty murky. So anyways, we're just going to try and continue this thing up on the big swim baits. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Oh, nice, nice. Wow, jumped over the tree. He had you caught behind it. What? Oh, he's good. We've been casting for like a half an hour with the big baits and Devin just decided to grab the Texas rig for a second. That That's was sick. one of my craziest catches, I think. Cause I cast it, there's a big log laying down and I ca cast it across the log into the reeds and immediately got the doink set the hook and i was like oh no he's on the other side of that log and i'm like keep attention keep attention and the dude jumps out of the water and jumps over the log i'm not even joking that was so freaking cool <laughs> spray lettuce bandito bug oh what the heck <laughs> it like slipped through the grass or something that was weird the little ones are out lately oh broke me off that could have been a good one he was running with it felt heavy Oh no, I forget where I put the Texas rig goodies. More sprayed lettuce. We've got some terminal tackle in our kind of all-purpose kayak and John boat box here. Terminal just kind of refers to like the hooks, weights, things of that nature, just uh, you know, other than your soft plastics and hard baits. So we have a boatload of our four aught hammer hooks. Definitely the uh, favorite size for most of the Guggen bait lineup. It fits perfectly with all those plastics. Got a couple different uh, sizes and color variations of some Wu tungsten over here. We've got some never chips. These are quarter ounce. And then we've got also some like green pumpkin speckled weights here. They're like uh, that bullet style or flipping weight. Probably just roll with this darker one for now. I really don't mind throwing either. That is going to do it aside from the sprayed lettuce bandito bug. And this thing is sick. I mean, I would throw this in clear water as well as stained water. It's uh, dark and it pops, but it's got that natural green too. So really can't go wrong with the sprayed lettuce color that I've never thrown until today's video on the channel. Neither Devin or I. If y'all want to grab any of this gear, by the way, guggensquad.com, you can save 10% at checkout with code Weston. That applies to everything here except for the Wu Tungsten and like maybe these Gomexus handles. Those are, those are going to be separate. But other than that, rods, baits, you name it. Imagine if this was like the Bass Pro Shops tank, there'd just be bass all over. <laughs> Ooh, got him. Got him. Got him. Watch those trees. Watch those trees. Oh, he's taking you in those trees. Oh, oh, he's not that bad either. Wow. God, you're getting solid fish on the Texas rig today. What is even happening? Another one on that Texas rig and that sprayed lettuce color bandito bug. This guy was going all sorts of crazy around all of those trees. It was really cool to see that in person because the water was pretty shallow and he was just going all through the trees trying to lose me. Luckily, I outsmarted him. Landed another Texas rig fish in the boat, back in the water. I downloaded the Final Cut Pro user manual and it's like 2,000 pages and I read like 70. There's just a lot of stuff I'm missing out on. Oh, he's swimming with it. Yep, see him? Little guy. We don't want to get that size. We'd like to get some bigger ones. Oh, nice. Why am I in that reed? Oh, God. Whole lot of action there in the last five seconds. Devin's on a fish. I ripped this bandito bug through the reeds. See ya, buddy. Cruising. Oh, he's going right back into the corner. I was just fishing. Maybe just work some of this stuff real quick and then call it. Oh, bite. You, you got it? He's got it. <laughs> oh, oh, Devin. This is actually a good fish. Like, this one's pretty good. This might be the biggest fish I've caught in a while. This literally is a, a good fish. Wow. 
a five plus. What? The drag. He had a lot of power. I should have loosened it up. Dang, that was a good fish. <sighs> Let's take a second to ask ourselves why we didn't loosen the drag on that one, y'all. Not good. That was definitely, I mean, like that was definitely four, but it was like five to six potentially. It was a big fish, big fish, big fish, big fish. Didn't feel like it at first. He just barely, he like subtly grabbed it. He was just kind of swimming around with it. Ooh, that was a good one. That was a really good one. Not cool. It's funny too, because I like talked to you guys in a very recent video about drag and how uh, whenever you're playing out a big fish like that, you should loosen it up a little bit. You got to kind of play those things out. They got a lot of, uh, I said power already a few times, but that guy definitely had a lot of muscle. And so your drag is just so tight that if they pull you in the right direction, they're going to get you. And I got got right there. Okay. Re-rig. hasn't jumped out of the water. Right, he's probably just shaking that hook. You think he already shook it? There's a good chance. A lot of times when you set the hook, you almost have like a hole, like a quarter inch hole. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, it's only because you're keeping it tight that it even stays in a lot of the times. You know, it's not always like you're setting it in the top of the mouth. A lot of times it's on the side there. <sighs> that was a good one. He was so subtle when he grabbed it too. The least aggressive bite of the day almost. Yeah, he's just like, oh, gotcha. It was just like an easy meal for him, you know, big fish. I just felt the tug, making sure it wasn't a bluegill. And I'm just kind of playing around like, oh, he's got it. Cause you know, all the fish lately have been kind of small. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden I saw him and that was the beginning of the end. This isn't my usual Texas rig setup. This line is like 15 pound. Normally I'd have like 20 pound on. The whole scenario there was just all bad. On the 20 pound line muscle rod, I've got that Citizen. So I'm kind of using like this uh, go-to rod that I would normally have all kinds of stuff tied onto. <laughs> Sick. But yeah, my ideal heavy setup is uh, on the front of the boat rather than in my hand. What's up with all the helicopters? Is there something going down in Dallas? Oh, heard that. How does it feel? Oh, that's really big. That is not bad at all. Yeah, just get ready. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Is your drag loose enough? Yep. Let him, let him pull a little bit. Maybe tighten it just a little bit. Keep it tight. That was a big fish. Where's the net? You're going to have to be my net. Yeah, this is going to... I think we got the fish, y'all. Oh, man. He's pretty big. You're good. You're good. You're good. Hopefully he can still take, keep that rod. Yeah, you might have to dip that rod a little bit. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, he's probably five. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Nice. Golly. Oh, we were just scared after losing that last one. My heart. I was messing with my drag to light, to loosen. Yeah, and then it was almost too loose for a second. Yeah. <laughs> You're shaking. I'm shaking. Let's go ahead and get this hook out of her mouth. It's been a hot minute since I've uh, caught a fish. I think this size. Let's get her dipped in the water. We're gonna have to put her on the scale. I couldn't tell how big it was because it was like swimming at us. Coordinated for this shit today. Five pounds flat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dang. Man, this is probably my only like fifth or sixth five pound bass. Five pounds is a number that, it seems like a number that everybody who goes largemouth bass fishing wants to catch. And to be able to secure one of these in the boat on our outing is just always extremely rewarding. I feel bad because you should have had a five or a six. There's, there's room for more. It didn't even feel very big. It was deceiving and she was swimming at us for a good second and then decided to make that jump out of the water. That's when we figured out that she was definitely not a little fish. And that's when Weston was able to secure the landing. Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and get a few pictures with her and then get her back in the water and on her way. You're the problem with the wave. <laughs> that was like the first or second cast after we just let go of that big one what is happening right now the texas rig all of a sudden late in the game after we thought the bite had died and we fished out in the open water for a long time not getting any hits is just all of a sudden pulling through nowhere near the caliber of the last two fish that were on the hook but we will gladly take a two and a half pounder in the boat on the t-rig okay let's uh try and keep this thing rolling my line's swimming yeah. Oh. A little slippage there, nice. 
He's taking you, crank him a little bit. I think your drag is good. So nice. Wow, what is going? Oh, is that another good one? That's another good one. Nice, nice. I'm gonna work us out a little bit. Good. Oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah, he's good. Oh shit. Get that rod down if you need to. Okay. Oh, he's good. Oh, he's good. You found the big ones, babe. I don't know what is going on. I'm not even able to crank right you're good. now. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You don't even need to crank. Let's play him out a little bit. You know? Is he able to take some line? No. Yeah. Okay. Good. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. That might be even bigger than the last one. Oh gosh. Oh, I think that's bigger, baby. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that's bigger. That's bigger. <laughs> that thing is huge, Devin. <laughs> oh shit! I'm sorry. I'm like smacking that's, that's you. Bigger than five. That's I don't know. No, it's fat. It's heavier. It's heavier. Here, take. Look, let's put them on scale. It's like the same thing. They don't even hit it. Insane. Your line just starts really kind of swimming. Insane. Dude, the bite today is not <laughs> like a normal fish bite. That's like a five and a half, probably. I don't know. Maybe. Ah, uh, it looks. I don't know. It's, I mean, it feels. It's the same length or shorter, but it's fatter. This is a fat fish. It's fatter. Yep. Guys. It, it could honestly be 20 inches or under, and that last one was right at or above. Just it's like that. 20 and a half. Yeah, this one is probably bigger. I think that's 20. We are about to put this thing on the scale, y'all. Holy smokes. Did it jump? No, we just saw it. No, it didn't jump at all. No. Wait. All right, this is gonna be over five. Oh yeah, that's like over five and a half. Nuh-uh. Five, nine. Nuh-uh. It's over five and a half. <laughs> Two fives in one day. Back to back <laughs> fish for me. What the heck? Out of nowhere, we were catching only small ones earlier. Okay. Wow, you found the juice. <laughs> One last look at this big old girl. Look at that belly. <laughs> so freaking cool. On that note, guys, we are gonna go ahead and wrap today's episode up. Crazy day, actually multiple days of fishing in this episode. Through some bigger baits, we're able to really dial those fish in and secure them on a Texas rig bite. If you guys wanna check out any of the gear today, squad.com code Weston at checkout. We will see you guys on the next one. Peace.